January 25, 1971, was the day Idi Amin Dada overthrew the government of Dr. Milton Obote and declared himself president of Uganda. At that time, almost all the retail and wholesale trade in Uganda was in the hands of Asians, an issue which was of great concern to Amin. In 1972, Amin announced an economic call to put the economy of Uganda back into the hands of Ugandans. First on the agenda was the reduction of the government shares in the nationalized companies from 60% to 49%. However, according to Daudi Kauda, an educationist, in August of the same year, Idi Amin ordered the expulsion of Asians, majority of whom were of Indian descent. They were given 90 days to leave or face imprisonment. My action, if you are actually uh, to see and check it carefully, you will find this is not against Britain at all. Uh, it is only transferring the economy to the hands of Ugandans. At the time of the expulsion, there were approximately 80,000 Indians living in Uganda, of which 23,000 had successfully applied for Ugandan citizenship. About 27,200 Indians emigrated to the UK. 6,000 went to Canada. 4,500 went to India, while 2,500 went to Kenya. You can imagine to leave a country where you have your family, you have your belongings, you have your what. To leave within 90 days, it's not easy. And those Asians were very rich by that time. In the wake of their departure, some 8,655 farms, agricultural estates, factories and companies, along with cars and homes were abandoned, which then begged the question, who was going to take ownership of these properties, more especially the shops? We didn't know the, the way out, how do we get commodities, where do we get them? And so all these, all these were questions which were put across. But contrary to circulated reports that it was a case of first-come, first-served basis for only Muslims, Kauda observes that an Asian property custodian board was set up by the president to oversee the reallocation of these properties to Ugandans. Within this board, a committee chaired by a Wanhajiwa Siki was constituted and its job was to interview and allocate the shops according to merit and demonstrated ability by the applicants to run the businesses that they showed interest in. The requirement which was wanted by the board was have you been, are you a businessman? Yes. Show us your work, your documents rather. Do you have, have you been trading? What, what, what licenses do you have? What work have you do, been doing? What experience do you have? As a result, Ugandans who are already involved in business managed to get some of these properties. Prominent among these is the former mayor of Kampala, Hajina Santege Sebagala, the late James Murwana, Gordon Wavamuno, Hajin Sedeko of Cairo Stores, and a renowned businessman from Masaka known as Kadingidi. Muslims, Christians, Catholics, those who had no religion, everybody participated and had a chance of getting a shop. Former Mayor Nasantege Sivagala says he competed for the shop he was interested in with 67 other applicants. <laughs> Whereas the former president had good intentions about strengthening the economy, Dr. Juma Sultan Kakuba, the head of political science at Chambogo University, believes Amin went about it the wrong way. This was a hurriedly decision made by the head of state. When you want to empower citizens, economically and even in other uh, fields you need to take a gradual process according to dr kakuba in the short run a few ugandans benefited from this move especially those who had the strong support uh, in the regime uh, they, they, they they benefited some of the people here started to go out you see uh, some had received the money. By then to be with a uh, $1,000, that was a lot of money. It is believed that Ugandan starting to trade led to the establishment of the Uganda Airlines in 1976. So he bought planes, four of them, you see. And these planes uh, really did a very wonderful work. <laughs> The standards of living of some Ugandans also improved exponentially. 
Ugandans by that time had money. Because somebody to had uh, 50,000 shillings, that was a lot of money by that time. One million was a lot of money by that time. However, in the long run, the expulsion of Asians was not good for the Ugandan economy because it lost its entrepreneurial class. These people who had no skills took over. And this is uh, where now the government found itself in a, a problem, uh, especially in the production uh, sector. And, uh, you know, when Amin was overthrown, these people who benefited actually lost the power because they had no ability and skill to manage the businesses that had been handed over to them. This led to a major decline in the economy, resulting in scarcity of basic goods like sugar, salt, soap, cooking oil and clothes, which in turn led to a rise in smuggling. Even on the international stage, Amin had created a lot of enemies for Uganda. His decision affected the the, 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 the interest of other states and the, those actors labeled it as uh, an economic war. Dr. Kakuba believes that Uganda could have benefited from the expulsion of Asians if Idi Amin had had enough academic and administrative knowledge of how to run a country and manage its economy. Especially foreign policy. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have made this kind of blunder. It is 47 years since former President Idi Amin Dada expelled Indians from Uganda. When the NRM government came to power in 1986, they were encouraged to return and they now contribute 65% to the country's tax revenue. However, the expulsion is an event that resonated across the world and will never be forgotten. Joyce Nakato, NTV.